Good morning, sisters and brothers. Welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today's Tuesday morning, Tuesday the 13th of April. And um, we come to give God thanks for this new day that he's given us and um, to commit our day to him afresh today. And so let's pray. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died for sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our collect for today. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, our psalm this morning is Psalm 8. Psalm 8. Uh, psalm number 8. Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, 
the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have created them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and, and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. And I'll read Keller's comment. The universe reveals God's glory. Aren't humans just specks of dust in this vastness? Physically, yes. Yet we fill the mind of God. The astonishment of the psalmist should be our astonishment. Why should God care about us? Because he made us in his image and given us the world he created to care for as his agents. Living with care for the land, sea, and air, and all who live there, and doing justice for every human being stamped with his image, God brings God glory. As a human race, we are not doing this very well. But Jesus has come. Hallelujah. And eventually the world will be under his feet. And then everything will be made right. Amen. Sisters and brothers, we are not doing this very well. We, we are created by God to be creative ourselves. We are created by God to, to, to look after his glorious, wonderful creation. We are created by God to care for other image bearers. We're not doing this very well. I like what Tim says here. He says, living with care for the land, the sea, and the air, and all who live there, and doing justice for every human being stamped with God's image, brings God glory. When we care for one another, when we care for the creation, when we care for... For when we seek justice for other human beings, we are bringing glory to God. When we, when, we, when we look after God's creation, we are bringing glory to God. You see, there's so many ways to bring glory to God. It's not just singing songs and praising him on Sunday morning or whatever. It is looking after his creation. It is seeking justice for those who have been mistreated and who have been treated unjustly. All of this brings glory to God. And Psalm 8 is a reflection of this. And the prayer, majestic God, how is it possible that we fill your mind? We who are mere specks in the vastness of the universe. You love and care for us so much, you were willing to become a weak infant and vulnerable child, all in order to save us. So now help us, we pray, in all our daily interactions, to treat every person I meet today as a, as a being infinitely precious in your sight, and to, and to care for the creation that you have given us to look after. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, our New Testament reading. New Testament. We are in John's Gospel. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. So John chapter 20, 11 to 18. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. 
As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in our remake, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. And so we have the first appearance of our Lord to Mary Magdalene, who then, of course, becomes the first evangelist, the first bearer of this message, this good news of resurrection. She goes to the other, the first person to say, I have seen the Lord. And since then, countless millions have since seen the Lord. Many of us have not seen him physically, of course, but we have seen him by faith. And one day, our faith will be sight and we will see him just like Mary did on that beautiful, wonderful Easter day, that joyful Easter day. But it, wasn't, it didn't start out joyful, did it? Mary is weeping. She's standing outside the tomb. Peter and John have left. They came, they looked, they surveyed the scene, <laughs> and they have left. They left Mary there. And she's weeping because Good Friday, Saturday is still in her mind. There is nothing to be joyful about. Not only have they killed her Lord, but they took the body and they've placed it somewhere that she doesn't know. And now she has no access to him. And then, of course, the angels came. And then Jesus himself came. And, of course, she didn't recognize him at first, but she recognized her name. When Jesus calls your name, oh, hallelujah. When Jesus calls your name, you know, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me, he says. And so she didn't recognize, she thinking he was a gardener. And she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell him, tell me where you have put him. You know, I was reading an, uh, an article a week or so ago about why is it that at first, at first, the disciples did not recognize Jesus, but then they did. So they didn't, and then they did. And, and it's, it, it's like very interesting, isn't it? Something to think about, because it's the same person, but there was something different about him. Mary did not recognize him at first, but then he said, he said her name. And then she recognized that voice. And then she recognized him. You know, it's this, and, and it tells us something about this resurrection body. There's a lot we don't know about the resurrection body. And it's the same body that you and I will have, sisters and brothers, by the grace of God one day. But it tells us that on the one hand, it's the same body. But on the other hand, it's not the same body. You don't, you recognize, you don't recognize at first, but then you recognize. And, and the person was saying in this article, imagine, imagine you know somebody, a childhood friend, 
maybe from primary school. And and the last time you saw this person, you know, it was 10 years of, you, you were both 10 years old or something, or, you know, just, just primary school age. And then 20, 30 years later, you saw this person again. At first, you don't really recognize him or her, didn't you? Because, because they've changed over the years. Time has changed. They, you know, they've grown and so on. And so it's the same person and it's the same body, but changed. With that, it's different. And at first, you don't recognize this person, but you know, you know there is something. There. And 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 if you, as you take a second look or even a third look, you begin to realize, ah, it's you. I, I know you from primary school days. And, 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 and it's the same kind of thing here. It's the same person. He has the same body, but it's different. And, and the resurrection made that difference. And so here, Mary didn't recognize him at first, but say, he, he said her name and she was overjoyed. And Jesus said, don't hold on to me. Don't, don't cling to me. Don't, and, 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 and this is, of course, the, you know, in a time of COVID, we, we are told not to embrace. But this is what you want to do. It's instinctive, isn't it? The person, the long lost person, the person you, you have, frankly, was just dead. You want to embrace him. You want to hold him. You want to say, is it really you? And uh, Jesus said, no, no, don't hold on to me. It's not time for that yet. It is me, but I must go to the Father. But go, go and tell the others. Go and spread the news. <clears throat> and Mary went. Mary hurried off. I have seen the Lord. Sisters and brothers, I pray that you'll be able to say that. Oh, I know you have not seen the Lord physically. Uh, most of us have not. But throughout the ages, throughout the centuries, our, our, our faith in Jesus is, uh, is our proof that we have seen him. We haven't seen him with these eyes. We've seen him with the eyes of faith. And like Mary, we can say, I have seen him. I've seen him in faith. In, in my studies in the word of God, I have seen the Lord. One day, one day, we will all, like Mary, our faith will become sight and we will say, I have seen the Lord. Um, one of the things I've been pr I'm praying for during this Ramadan, and I do this every Ramadan, and is, to, is, is for Muslims to see the Lord. Uh, the, many Muslims come to faith in Christ because they, they see vision, they get vision of the risen Christ. I pray that many will do that this year. Again, Ramadan, I think, begins tomorrow. And I pray for that. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you are alive. And Mary proclaimed it. The first person to say, you are alive. And so Lord, we, we thank you for her testimony. We thank you that the, 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 the apostles, the disciples believed her testimony despite the culture and despite the, 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 the reticent in believing the testimony of a woman in those days, they believed her. And what joy the resurrection brought her and them. And so, Lord, we who have seen you by faith, Lord, give us this joy, we pray. May we bubble up inside with this joy that when we finally see you face to face, our joy will be complete. Our joy will be full. 
And so, Lord, we thank you for the good news, this hope for the world, that you're alive, Lord Jesus. And that, and that truth makes all the difference in the world. The difference between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. The difference between gloom and, and glory. The difference between sadness and joy. The difference between darkness and light. Lord Jesus Christ, you're alive. And so, Lord, we pray that you will give us the eyes of faith to see you so that we too will proclaim that we have seen the Lord and he's alive. He's alive in our lives. He's alive in me. He's alive in the world. Lord, help us, we pray, to, to proclaim this truth far and wide to those who are, who are still in the gloom and the sadness of Good Friday and Easter Saturday and Holy Saturday. Lord, give us this grace to proclaim this good news to a world of people who are going through a pandemic and that's suffering the, the hopelessness of this, of death all around. Lord, may we proclaim this news like Mary. He's alive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that resurrection power in us. You have quickened our hearts and you have made us alive with you. And so, Lord, because you are alive in us, we will never die. And that is good news. And so, Lord, when we think of those who who have died, who have passed from this life into the next, who those whom you have led across the threshold into eternity. We thank you for their lives. We remember again the life of Prince Philip and we pray for the queen and the royal family and those who are mourning his passing. We pray for others who have gone before us. We remember Uncle Dean, Jamaica, and the family. We remember our sister Chioma here as we prepare for her farewell service here and in Nigeria. We thank you, Lord, that they who saw you by faith now see you by sight. And so, Lord, we thank you that now their faith is now realized in your presence. And they can proclaim like Mary, I see Jesus. And so, Lord, thank you for them. Lord, we pray that you will guide us, continue to lead us through this journey. So that when we are taken by the hand, as it were. You will lead us into your presence, where our faith will become sight, and that our joy will be complete. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, Father, we pray and continue to pray for the people of St. Vincent. We ask that you'll remember them in your mercy today again. Hear our prayer for them, Lord. St. Vincent and the Grenadines and all the islands surrounding were suffering from this volcanic eruption. Hear our prayer for them, Lord, and protect them from the volcano, protect them from the ash, any form of disease that they may uh, that, 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 that they may be susceptible to from this ash that has been that they're experiencing there in that country, in the, on those islands in the Caribbean. Lord, remember those, your people. 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And, and Lord, we continue to pray for Muslims. Remember Muslims, Lord, especially as they uh, approach and go through the month of fasting in their faith. We pray for them, Lord, that they will have a vision of the resurrected Christ, that they will see Jesus like Mary and so many others throughout history. And like Thomas, they will say, my Lord and my God, in worship and adoration. As the Lord remember Muslims, especially during this Ramadan period, reveal yourself to them like you did to Saul on the road to Damascus, as you did to Mary at the tomb, so that they will see Jesus and be saved. Save them, Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and our Oh, St. Patrick's prayer. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, one and all.